Welcome everyone to another Wednesday night to Fundamentals to Gain Inner Peace with your host, Coach Menachem Bernfeld. And tonight we're going to be discussing Elo. What does it mean to you? Um, I would love to hear. Maybe we would like to share just to know what comes up. What are the ideas? And for everyone, it's different. Interesting to hear. Thank you for all that setback. Uh, respond to the email just to see different ideas. So here we are, Rish Chodesh. Today was Rish Chodesh. And um, for those who want to think about it and want to stop and try to figure it out, Sometimes we have to relearn, like reparenting new ideas. What are the ideas that I picked up? If it's still working, does it work for me or it doesn't? And how to make it work. So before we go there, um, last week, last week we discussed some effective techniques to center yourself. We discussed the different centers, the heart center, the mind center, and the gut. Everybody feels it somewhere. You can feel it when you're out of line and you're not centered, overwhelmed when there's a lot going on. To become aware of where do you feel it? Some feel it in the head, some in their stomach, some in the heart. And we discussed a few easy techniques the five techniques we discussed, easy, they don't cost money, they don't they take too much time, and it's something that we don't really have an excuse why not to do it. We just have to want to do it. So the five techniques, we'll just uh, mention it fast. The first one was to focus on your breath. And the second one is standing like a tree and imagining the roots going deep down holding you in, 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 you know, holding you firm. Third one is to feel your feet. When you focus on your feet, you can feel the energy going from your head all the way down. Another one is to focus, put your hands on the heart. And you just put some attention on the heart. See what the heart does, what the heart does for you 24, 7, till 120, Mitz Hashem. It's working, it's there, Bar Hashem. And do you see what comes up when you connect to the heart with a smile? And then the fifth one was calling the observer, be able to distance yourself from yourself and observe yourself. Something we discussed in the past, to be able to see where am I and to see yourself overwhelmed, to see yourself with all of these things going on. You don't need to change anything, but if you can just observe and be there and see it, that itself, that itself helps. So um, if you weren't here last week, you can always listen to the recording and see, you know, how it works and uh, try it out. Hopefully you can do it every day a few times. And tonight we're going to be talking about Elo, but before we start, let's do what we do every Wednesday night, stop for a moment, and breathe, get grounded. Somebody mentioned to me that when I say he should focus on his breath, it's too much pressure. He has to focus on his breath. So he told me he doesn't focus on his breath. He just breathes in and out. Amazing. If that works, do it. If when you hear the word focus, it's hard because you're not focused, that's okay. Just breathe in and out. Um, for those who do want to focus and they see the mind flies away, so we learn how to gently bring it back. You always bring it back to the moment. And then you find yourself in the pizza shop. And you say, oops, how did I get there? And you come back to your breath. And then you find yourself thinking about your neighbor. You come back to your breath. You find yourself thinking about your kids. Come back to your breath. And that's basic, you know, meditation. 
mindfulness, being in the moment, present. So let's try to do that now for a few minutes, not a few minutes, just a few deep breaths in and out, see what works for you, whether you want to focus or not. Just a deep breath and just become aware of the now. All the way in and let it all out. Deep breath in to your stomach and let it all out. Another deep breath. Then let it all out. Beautiful, deep breath in and just feel in the moment, in and out. And if you want, we can add the technique of focusing on your feet and just see all the energy, the pressure, whatever you feel, everything go down to the place where you're focusing on. You focus on your feet, just keep your focus on your feet, see how your feet are feeling. And just see what comes up, what you feel. Beautiful. Now there's no right and wrong. No right or wrong. Whatever comes up is awareness. It's in the moment. You're being mindful. And that's the beginning. That's the first step on our journey. If you can become more aware, being in the moment. So some people feel positive. They feel relaxed. Others, it's too hard. Different things come up. That's okay. Become aware of it. Okay. So if you feel comfortable, you can uh, share in the chat. Let me know what comes up for you. When you hear the word hello, I'll just mention a few that people sent in and we'll see if we'll get some responses over here. And to try to be honest, it, you know, nobody sees it, it's direct to me. And I'll tell you a surprise, you're not the only one that feels that way. <laughs> Whatever you're going to mention. A lot of emotions come up. Guilty, focusing on all the things I've done wrong, pressure, fear, a lot of negative, um, not, I don't think about it, okay, escape, no connection. I don't know where to start, a lot of pressure, I'm lost. Every year, the same story. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. Again, you're not the only one. How to change, fear of change. Am I changing? Is it working? All of these questions come up. And yes, it is overwhelming when you hear all these questions. What am I doing? Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? What does Hashem want from me? Great question. Wow. And again, there's no right or wrong. It's when you stop, you take a deep breath and you, you know, contemplate, meditate. What's this all about? There was a Shkodesh. We're having Elul come, you know, Elul, Shoifer, Shuva, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. It's a lot going on. So just, and it's not our first, it's not our first year. And looking back, many times we felt good afterwards. Sometimes we didn't, we're not sure. We don't know how to, you know, from one to 10, is it working or not? Working on my davening, has it worked in the past? Do I know where I am? Do I know what I need to do? So there's a lot of confusion. So let's take a deep breath and just have some compassion. 
just when you feel lost, when you have these questions and you become aware of it, even if you don't get the answers right away, you don't have the answers. And I don't know if I'll be able to give you the answers tonight. <laughs> but just to be okay with the things that are coming up. So if you can stop, sit down, you can write, take a pen and paper, you sit down and you think, where am I? What's this all about? And these feelings come up. That's amazing. And write it down. I feel this way, I feel that way. I have fear, confused. Last year I tried this, I'm not sure if it worked, or I did, and I liked it, should I do it again? All of these questions, you write it down, and you become aware of the things that come up. Another good question that you can ask yourself is, what do I need to, you know, to help me on this journey? I say, El is a journey, and... Most of you, they come every Wednesday night, you're on this journey the whole year. You know, we take some time to become aware of what's going on. What am I looking for? Why am I, why, what do I feel? And that look could be the same thing. You're stopping, contemplating to see, you know, globally or yourself. You want to become close to Hashem. What does that mean? And uh, things come up. And that's what I call being on a journey. So what's that one thing that would help you? Something that helps you while you're feeling overwhelmed or confused, fear or pressure, these feelings come up. What's something that if you would have that, it would help you? So just take a moment to think. Again, we're not coming to the answer yet. What Elul is. As of now, it's not important. First, we have to see what do we have in our basket? What are we carrying around when I think about it all? So just take a moment, see what comes up, those feelings, and then think what's something that could help you while you're on this journey. A good friend, some clarity, love, Self-compassion, self-care, yes, important, very important. I mentioned many times, anytime you're going to sit down and these emotions come up, whether it's positive, negative, whatever it is, you always need to have the full picture, be there for yourself, and that's why self-care is so important. And... Many people are not aware of what does self-care mean? How do I do it? Why should I do it? Why would it help? But in basic words, it's just being there for yourself. Being there. And that's so important. Reassurance. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, so just seeing what's something that I would love to have. Just to help me out on this journey just to be there for myself but that's a step even before being there for yourself like whoever mentioned having a friend to discuss it with a group um, love and compassion that's important if you can give yourself the love you need the self-love self-compassion that hug that's amazing So just the idea, the idea of shuva, to make it very simple, it's just returning to those who are running. And we know why we want to run, because it's not always comfortable to come back, to face myself, to be there for myself. So just come back home. And everybody could see it different. You could talk about the inner child. You could talk about being honest. You know, feeling okay with who you are. If when you stop and you look in the mirror, you have a hard time because you don't feel there's anything there that you can sit with, that you can hold some positivity. That can be very hard. 
And for those people, you wouldn't want to sit down and think about yourself. But we discussed two weeks ago and uh, many Wednesday nights, the idea of you're okay. Like, really? Yes, I'm not discussing the things that you want to change, you want to work on. That's a conversation. We can talk about it. But you have to have that feeling before you work on something, before you want to change, before you want to get better. You always have to have that core, okay feeling about myself. So take a moment, think, what do I see when I look in the mirror? If I have a hard time stopping, why? What do I think about myself? How do I feel about myself? And just saying, you know, thinking, am I really okay? Am I? I don't know. I'm not sure. And all the negativity can come up. And all you can make a list of negative things about yourself. That's for many easier. I know not for everyone, everybody's different. But if that's if that's what, what happens when you stop, then the work for you is to start building a positive list about yourself. That would be tshuva. That would be, that would be the work. Just coming back, just coming back to yourself. Being okay with who you are. And then we take it to the next step. Thanking my creator, whoever created me, and connecting, you know, being able to connect, which can be so hard for so many. Connecting with my creator, talking about Hashem, becoming closer. If you don't feel good about yourself, there's a lot connected to how you feel about Hashem. And that's a question that I ask. How do you know what Hashem thinks about you? You ever think about that? When you sit down and across the table of Hashem, you have a meeting. You're like, hi. Just stop for a moment. Let's think. I don't know if you ever thought this way, but just imagine looking at Hashem and just being there. What comes up? What comes up? Many heavy emotions. Now you're going to ask me, how do I know? Well, yeah, you're right. How do we know? How do we know? But usually, what you're thinking in your mind about yourself, that's what you're going to see and hear when you want to focus and think about what Hashem thinks about. Because that's the way you think about yourself. So if all the negativity comes up, and if you, if when I say, you're okay, it's hard for you to accept that, then that's probably what you think Hashem thinks about you. Now you might say, okay, Menachem, maybe I'm right. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but again, it's your mind. How do we know what's right and what's wrong? How do we know? But I can definitely tell you that if you only can come up with a list of negative things, then you have it all wrong. That's clear. That's not what Hashem thinks about you. And I can, you know, I mentioned many times, I can tell you from today till tomorrow how Hashem loves you. And talking about Elul, how Elul is really amazing, amazing days. You know, it's something I have to tell myself also. Relearning. To understand that, you know, it's all there for us to better, something to make it better for us, to feel better, to grow, to become closer. And that's what so many are walking around with, all the negativity hanging, pushing down, and that's... Nobody wants to sit with that. And if that comes up, then obviously Elo is something that too hard to think about. But to believe that Hashem loves me unconditionally? Yeah. Not only if I do A, B, or C. But what do you mean? I have to do I have to do what he wants. That's true. 
But the love, talk about a uh, parent or child, the core self, you are lovable, you're okay, and Hashem loves you. Yes, there are things to work on. But before that, Hashem, of now, if you have a hard time loving yourself, if you have a hard time being with yourself, holding that space, and really self-compassion, self-love for yourself, I can tell you from today till tomorrow how Hashem loves you. You're not really going to believe it. Because it's that deep feeling. That deep feeling that we're looking for. What are some ideas that we hear about on Elul? Talking about Melech Basoda, Hashem, the king is right here. We can talk to him. What the, what comes up for you when you hear that? Mm, pressure. Guilt. Fear. Oy, oy, oy. What happened to the love? What happened to the... Like, I can talk to him. He's my father. I just want to stop for a moment and create, you know, hold space for those that can't feel that way. And it's okay. It's okay. This is part of relearning. To understand that for many, when I say Hashem loves you, Hashem is your father, it doesn't really talk to them. It doesn't talk to me. It's nice. But I don't know. I've tried so many times. It's not working. Really? This is what he does? I don't know. Just become aware of that. And really deep down, that's a feeling that we're walking around with. I could be guilty. I'm not doing the right thing. I'm not sure if he loves me. I'm here for you. You're not the only one. Another idea, talking about Elul, Yimei Harachman Vaharatsain, talking about compassion, mercy, Yimei Ahava. What comes up when you hear this? Ani Ledoidi Vidoidi Li. We hear it a lot. We're so used to it, but yeah, okay. What does it mean? My beloved, really? How does it work? It's hard. These concepts are hard. It's not tangible. Just to see what comes up. It's okay. Take a deep breath and see what comes up. And that's really the work that you know many of us need to do to relearn, reconnect with myself with the compassion, with believing in myself, being able to go to sleep at night saying, I had a good day. It worked out. It wasn't perfect. That's okay. I'm not perfect. And that's okay. That's okay. And why, you know, that's something that Many of us have to work on, and it sounds like work. I don't want to do more work, but it's just holding yourself, holding yourself. If you can hold yourself, believe in yourself, be there for yourself, then we can take it to, you know, to believing and being able to connect to something higher than us, our creator, Shem, to be there. So it all boils down to that. How do I feel about myself? What are my thoughts about myself? And again, even if you have things to work on, it doesn't mean we're perfect. And Hashem loves us, even if we're not perfect. He created us that way. You're still looking for perfect? Hmm. That must be very, very hard because there is no perfect. We're growing every day. So for those who struggle, a good idea 
is to call a friend. Or you imagine, what would you tell a friend if they call you and they tell you they're, they're lost, they don't feel they've done anything the past year, what's this all about? How? What would you tell them? How would you hold the space? How would you be there for them? Whether you would know what to say or just listen. And many times it's easier when somebody else can tell some, you know, some positives about yourself. Write it down, start believing it. And let's take a moment, look back at the year. Elul is the, the last month of the Jewish calendar. Tishrei is the, you know, the new year, Rosh Hashanah. The last month we look back and there's so much to thank Hashem for. Hmm. What comes up? <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot going on. There's ups and downs. We're not happy about everything. We don't understand. That's okay. But you have to be able to thank Hashem for something. Something. If you can't, just be aware of that. How about thanking yourself? Thank yourself for something in the past year, past few months. It could be something small, something that you did yesterday, today. You have to be able to appreciate, to thank yourself. You have to be able to be there, to feel those, those emotions. What mitzvah did you do today? Hmm. I don't know. I do everything every day the same thing. Mitzvah, some. We're not aware, we're not mindful. I just read very interesting about a capital tillin. That if you say every day twice in Elo, I think it says from the Ariya Kudish, I'm not sure who brings down from the Chida. And when I read it, I was like, wow, I have to find out which capital tilim this is. This is amazing. And it's the capital tilim that we all say in Rosh Hashanah. I was like, oops, I say it anyways. So that's the difference between being mindful. What am I doing? Or stop. And you read it from somewhere else. You look at it, you're like, wow, this is a mitzvah. I've been doing this for years. Amazing. So can you thank yourself? Can you feel it? Can you put it in your bank account? Can you, you know, feel it? But we don't. We're used to it. But we have so much to thank Hashem, so much to thank ourselves. It might be hard. But that's the first step. Thinking about El, relearning what El is all about, full of love. Full of amazing things where Hashem loves us. But the first step is to thank myself, to see the positive um, in myself, the positive around me, even if it's a little bit. Just work on it, take it in. If it's too hard, that's okay. Be aware of that. That's always step number one. Step number one is to see what did I pick up in the past? What did, did I believe till today? And here Menachem is telling me, I should just feel good about myself. Really? That's Elul? That's Chuva? <laughs> it's not me. I'm not the one who's saying it. But what I could say is, if you can't cash in, if you can't feel that, you're not going to get anywhere. First, start with something, that core feeling of, I'm okay even if there are things that I have to work on. Yes, there are some positive things in my life, positive things that I did, positive something about me, unconditionally, even if I'm imperfect. That's step number one. And then you want to know what's the real LO, what's the healthy LO, so we can talk about it, maybe next week. But just start, you know, with the awareness just before we finish, just I want to mention one good idea, something that I'm thinking about myself. Find something that 
whether it's a book, you want to listen to something, find something that you feel talks to you. And what does it mean it talks to you when you read it? It makes you feel good. Yeah. It makes you feel connected. It makes you feel, oh, okay, okay. Yes, I am worth. Oh, I am doing good. It should make you feel good. Something that connects to you. You know, you can listen to a podcast, listen to, it should be something small. You find a book, don't finish the whole book. One paragraph. Sit down for a minute or two, read it, think about it, close it, and walk around with it the whole day. And that should be your elo. Find that one thing, that small thing that you can read, listen to, you know, think about it. Again, it shouldn't be an hour podcast, just for two minutes, one paragraph, something small that when you read it, it makes you feel good. And then the guilt, I know it's going to come up. I know the guilt, all those voices. I know. That's okay. We're used to that. Find something positive, something that talks to you. And make that what you're going to do this, Elo. Today is number one. You might miss a day too. That's fine. And that's what you're going to walk around with, feeling okay with yourself, feeling good with yourself, and eventually connecting with your creator, thanking him. And I, I believe that would be amazing. So that's it for tonight. Hopefully next week we'll talk a little bit more of what Elul is, a little bit more of healthy, relearning, reparenting. And... Uh, We'll take it from there. So thank you very much. Um, any questions you can put in the chat. If you feel comfortable, you can raise your hand. You can ask your questions. Past recordings are available at menachemburnful.com. Any questions in the future, letting me know where you are in this journey, coachmenachemajima.com. You, you can send an email. And uh, let's see the chats. Great question. First, what's the first month of the year? Yes, Nisan. But I'm talking about Rosh Hashanah. So some say Rosh Hashanah or Nisan. But the idea of the beginning of the year, Rosh Hashanah, our new year, starts in Rosh Hashanah. So Elo is the last month. Time to look back and thank. Very good. Something that you connect to, yes, a book or a podcast, but again, it shouldn't be something big. Don't add something big to your day. Okay, and for you that you're feeling numb, first of all, you're not the only one. Just take a deep breath and understand that it's normal. Okay, and when you feel guilty, those are the voices. You become aware of those voices and smile. Just observe those voices. That's always step number one, the awareness. And then you can spend some time, create the space to be there for yourself. You feel numb for a reason and that's okay. And what's the reason? Well, specific, I don't know, but in general, all the ideas that we talk about, Elo, and all the ideas that we pick up, and all the ideas that we think have we have to do and then we don't, that itself, talk about the pressure, all of those heavy emotions that come up, we don't want to sit with it. So it's okay. So I'm there for you. Be there for yourself, create that space, and then bring in what's something that works for you, that just can help you be there, even though you're not going to change it. Whether it's a friend or spending some time with yourself, journaling, maybe some art, some self-care, just that it's okay.
Isn't Hashem always close by? Wow, that's a great, great question. He is, he is. The question is, the question is, where are we? He's always there. Hashem is always there. Where am I? Sometimes I run away. Depending on my ups and downs. So yes, Hashem is always there. But I would ask you, if you always feel the same, um, if you always feel the same, so my question is always, is it real? It might be rote. It might be something that you're used to. So you're talking to him, which is amazing. But at the end of the day, we have ups and downs. And I, I you know, I share a lot about the emotions. The day that we feel good, the day we don't feel, you know, the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs. If somebody's okay every day, we discussed in the past, it might be um, an escape. Not for now, but yeah, we discussed it many times. So I, I would ask the same question. If you always feel the same connection to Hashem, and you always feel close. And, you know, why am I here trying to see some negative? Chas v'sholem, if you always feel the positive and you're working on it, and it's always, you feel connected, and no matter what, you're always there. That's amazing. Keep it up. But it's just something to think about. Something that I, I would think about. Yeah, Hashkah Pratis is something to work on. Again, everybody has their things, how they become close to Hashem. And that would be a little at the end of the day, it's becoming close to Hashem. But step number one is become closer to yourself. Many of us have to become closer to ourselves. I should be able to give myself that hug. Even if I didn't get it when I was younger. And we all have our stories and we all have our things, yes. But now we're reparenting, we're relearning and the adult can be there for the child or whatever whichever way you want to say it we can be there we can create that space that we need when we have the ups and downs and then eventually we can turn to our creator and say thank you thank you and start thanking him from that core from that real connection of yourself and Hashem. So thank you very much. Again, there is no right or wrong. The awareness part is just becoming aware of where am I, what do I feel? Some heavy questions. If you can sit with it, just to think, you know, what's my relationship to myself? What's my relationship to Hashem? See what comes up. If you feel numb, that's okay. You can sit with that, not for too long, but just you become aware, you can start writing. What's something that I don't want to feel? If you can go there, if you want to do it by yourself, if you need the help, reach out for help, and then just see what comes up. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you all for sharing. Thank you. Thank yourself for taking some time off. Time that you deserve. Time for yourself. Give it to yourself every day. And have a great night. And I'll see you next week Wednesday night. Have a good night and a good week.